Happy Wednesday, day 37 of 40. In uh, 1999, the uh, White House staff granted Edmund Morris, who had recently won a Pulitzer Prize for his biography of uh, Teddy Roosevelt, they granted him um, sort of unimaginable uh, access to Ronald Reagan in order to write an official biography of Reagan. So they allowed him to sit in on meetings, they allowed him uh, to read Reagan's diary, they allowed him to do all this stuff that no one, uh, as I understand it, had ever had that kind of access to a sitting president before. And Morris ends up writing this biography of Reagan called Dutch, uh, and, and he makes stuff up. Like, he makes up a character who does not exist places him in all these meetings. He makes up footnotes to hide the fact that he's made this stuff up. And to make it bizarre, the, the person that he makes up is actually himself. He sort of ghosts himself into all these meetings so he knows what's going on, so he can talk about it. And then to make it even more bizarre, at the end of the book you find out that when he was a kid, Ronald Reagan, uh, also at that point a kid, a few years older than, than Morris, Reagan had been a lifeguard and had saved Edmund Morris from drowning. So there's, there's so many ways that this guy is sort of not qualified to write this biography. I mean, he's got all these conflicts of interest, and then he just makes stuff up. So if you want to read Dutch, um, it's a, a memoir of Ronald Reagan. You can find it in the library. I don't know what, whether it's in the, under the fiction or nonfiction section. They sort of don't know what to do with the book. But Today, I am going to give you the assignment of reading a really long section uh, in one sitting. It's Matthew 26, uh, I think verses 14, through the end of chapter 27. I don't have time to read it in this devotion, and I want you to not rush through it. N.T. Wright says a lot of people come to this passage and they try and get through it quickly, which is like listening to a great piece of music at 10 times the normal speed. It just, it ruins it. So, uh, I want you to read it, and I want you to place yourself in the story. So I want you to do, uh, for real reasons, good reasons, what Edmund Morris did for bizarre reasons. And that is to write yourself into the story, because there's a sense in which that is what it means to be uh, a Christ follower. We are in Christ, and what happens, it involves us. So I'm going to read a, a short section of this, and it deals in particular with um, the disciples' response to what Jesus says. So it, um, it starts with Judas' betrayal. Um, and so Matthew chapter uh, 26, uh, verse 14, Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty pieces of silver, from then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, which is Passover, because when the Jews were going to get out of Egypt, you know, back at the time of Pharaoh, they did not have time for their bread to rise. They had to prepare quickly. So there was no leaven in the bread. So also called the festival of unleavened bread. The disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said to them, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. So what, it's worth, what is worth noting here uh, is the tone of, on, the, on behalf of the others, so Peter you sort of cops an attitude and, and uh, is going to say it won't be him, and of course it turns out to be him. But what we get from everyone else is not a tone of anger or defiance so much as it is of concern. Um, there's a suggestion that they're worried that it might be them, right? Like, I'm not going to do this, am I? They sort of trust what Jesus is saying more than they trust their own heart. Or maybe they have a new insight into just how dark 
their heart can be. There's a humility there that is worth reflecting on. Could it be me? Right? Is it me? Please say it's not me. So the artwork that I put in today is uh, of, the, of the Passover meal. It's a famous Leonardo da Vinci uh, painting, and, and it's, it's famous in part because it gets so many things wrong. <laughs> I mean, Jesus looks like a, a, you know, a European, and the dress code is all wrong. And then there's just the fact that they're all on one side of the table, uh, which suggests that it's like a photo op or something. I mean, there's, you, you can read about that if you want. Uh, if you Google what's wrong with Leonardo's uh, 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 da Vinci's picture, you can, um, you can read about that. But first, you're going to read Matthew chapter 26 and 27. And your, your, that's your assignment for today. But, but also, I want to be sure you do that reflecting on the fact that we are part of this story, right? And baptism in and of itself is we identify with Christ. We be, go in Christ under the water identifying him with his crucifixion and then identifying him with him in his resurrection. Have a good day.